Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Rose Simpson. I'm a librarian at the New Haven Free Public Library. And welcome to um, the office hours of our creative in residence, Nadine Nelson. Nadine, would you like to tell us about yourself and what you're doing today? OK, I'm Nadine Nelson. I'm the chef owner and educator of Global Local Gourmet. It's an interactive culinary event company where we specialize in experiential food education. And I'm here on the library veranda and on the green, on the common of New Haven. And, and anyone who's watching right now, if you'd like to join in, come by the library, you can pop on out and hang out with Nadine. Yeah, we're on the veranda and you can ask me any questions about um, you know, business, about being creative, about being an artist, about, you know, policy. I do a lot of different things. Um, and I've done a lot of different things. And um, being half a century old, um, I, you know, can lead people to a lot of different directions for resources or um, connect people. So I like my office hours. I have uh, a couple people that have um, that I speak with every week. I, um, before I came here, I was a little later than I wanted to be perhaps, uh, although I was on time, but um, I like to, I like to be somewhere early if I can. Um, the president of Mitchell College, which is um, in um, New London, called me about a dairy that they have and she would like to do work with um food and you know bring more attention to food and she found me through linkedin which i thought was so interesting because i need to update my linkedin profile and um it's not it's not up to date um with all the current things that i've done um and i said oh you can talk to me during my office hours um so there's lots of different people that I've talked to um, over the course of um, six months. There have been executive directors of nonprofit organizations. There have been people who want to start like a mobile hair salon. Um, there's people that um, they're starting um, nonprofits and um, they're looking into what is the most uh, formative way in which to have a strong foundation and build their boards. So there's all different types of information that um, people have asked me about. There are people who would like to talk to me um, about an artist statement, how to write one, what to, what to put in it. Um, as a trained writing teacher, I was saying that to Scott, who was here um, inquiring about the program and I think wants to come back um, tomorrow to co-create, well, we'll also be doing it on the green and as a way to um, help me with my different projects so that I will be presenting in September. Um, so I was going to draw, but you probably can't see this. So I'm just going to cut. And I have someone coming over, I know, at one o'clock. And... I should have taken a turn around the library and tried to convince someone to come share some space um, on the veranda with me. Um, Rose said it'd be weird if I was just talking to myself, but lots of people do that, like on podcasts and stuff, but I'm not really like that, but I can't, <laughs> I can't just start talking about um, random things that people need to know about as a creative. So one of the things I've been thinking about, thinking about artist statements is that I'm not a categorized artist. I'm not an artist that can be categorized in one thing. I don't do just visual art. Um, I do installations. I do, people know me for my food art. But when you look at, I don't know, like when you think about food art and when people think about food art, it's really about like, it's not really necessarily about what my events and my immersive experiences are about. And I had an event 
in Long Island City. It was my first event um, after our shutdown. And it was an in-person event in a garden. And I sent um, pictures to a steward of another garden in New York, in Harlem, in which I had a residency. And I activated the space. And, and um, the activation that I did yesterday is called Harvest Mandalas, which I first did in a big way um, in New Haven as an art commission by Art Space. And I did it at the Ely um, Center for Contemporary Art which is a great space that a lot of people in New Haven have never been to that's on Trumbull when people should look it up. It's usually, I think, open on Thursdays, Fridays, I think, and Sundays, but you can look it up. Um, so I did the Harvest Mandalas there. I did it yesterday in a garden um, in Long Island City. And I sent her pictures of my event where um, not only could you make like mandalas where you could, you know, play with like shells or other things like that. You could draw them. You, um, I had stencils that people could draw. I had, um, you know, coloring pages that people could do, but people wrote mantras that went with the mandalas. And, um, also I made these really beautiful food mandalas with captured food, um, that people could eat. And um, I did cards because I um, often do cards. I did mandala reading, readings. And um, so I showed her pictures of all of that. And she said, oh, um, what you do is spiritual nutrition. And I thought that's so um, really kind of encapsulates what I do. And so now I like have to, I think, um, kind of rework my artist statement to better acknowledge um, the variety of things that I do and it's beyond just like food art. So, Rose, do you wanna ask me a question? I don't know if Rose is there. I'm looking at uh, GQ Magazine and there are a lot of very um, handsome men, however, um, there's nothing really that's grabbing me to cut out except Denzel Washington. And so here we're talking about creation and in regard to some of the things I do is um, produce events. And so um, I'm gonna take out the picture of Denzel because he's so attractive. Um, I produce events and then, and then people have me create events or curriculum or classes or different things for them. And so one of the classes I've been thinking about doing is a class for men called From, Inza, From Incel to Denzel and um, Cooking Casanova. Um, because it seems like a lot of people are having trouble dating and a lot of women um, have a lot of complaints about men. And I think that it's hard for men to hear that feedback. And it's hard also for women to hear feedback for what things that men would like to for heteronormative or heterosexual relationships. And I thought cooking would be a great way to discuss some of those men are from Mars, women are from Venus kind of dilemmas in a way that people would be open and it would be fun. Because cooking is always fun. And a lot of people don't know how to cook, um, but I always think it's really attractive when a man knows how to cook. And being Jamaican, in my family, everyone has to learn how to cook. And many of the men in my family love to cook more than their spouses. And I know that it's really appreciated. We have some interesting magazines here. So let me 
talk about New Haven and the common. New Haven. They're setting up a tent. I'm right next to the courthouse. And then across the street to the diagonal is City Hall. To there's three churches that flank the right side of the mall. And then in front, all the way to the end used to be a mall that is no longer there. Um, and is now apartment buildings, but the green is open to anyone. Um, and I love the idea of the classic common where in many places in Europe, places weren't open to a commoner. And so in America, the whole notion of the green is like supposed to be open to everyone. And the New Haven green definitely is a very colorful place that is open to everyone. I was wondering if they were going to have, um, they're having concerts this year. And I think Arts and Ideas has started, which is a festival that is done every year in June. And they started a little earlier this year and have lots of um, online events and then they have in-person events too. Ramps. I love ramps. I haven't picked any ramps this year. What are ramps exactly? I've heard the name, but I'm not sure what they are. Um, ramps, they're in the Allium family. They're wild. They take a very long time to germinate and to, um, I think, to grow from seed. I think it takes like five to seven years. So, you know, you're not, when you go out foraging, you're only supposed to take a couple of leaves. I guess these are probably cultivated ramps. But when you're foraging and the etiquette of ramps, you take a couple of the leaves and try and leave the bulb so they come back. In the mid-Atlantic, a lot of places they've overforested the ramps. So it's really, they're really hard to find. And as I said, like if you want to grow them from scratch, I think they take five to seven years to grow. So consequently, they're very expensive at the farmer's market. A bunch of ramps, I think, can be like, you know, $14. So, but they're in the Allium family. I really like them. Um, they taste really good if you make vinegar. I have a lot of um, ramp vinegar that I made last year. Um, so, you know, you use it on salad dressing, at Mia's, the people used to go to Mia's, sushi, um, how we would dress his salads, bun with dress the salad is with ramp vinegar that he, you know, would cultivate. Um, I was over there when a New York Times um, journalist was um, photographing him and interviewing him and his mom brought a big bag of ramps um, that I guess she has probably on her property. Um, and so he'll make, um, you know, vinegar. I, if I get some this year, I love to make oil and you can make a pesto, people char the ramps and you can just eat them, you know, on a sandwich or, um, or I have a really good um, recipe for ramp cornbread, you know, so if you like scallions or onions, leeks like that, it's in that family. I think I'm going to start drawing because I these magazines are not following me at all.
So tomorrow we're going to be, um, Ife Franklin is going to be here with me making, they're going to be making art. And I don't know what I'm going to bring. I, I what I'm going to bring tomorrow. Um, it depends. But we might sew some things maybe tomorrow. Maybe that might be fun to do. Um, and so now I'm just drawing. I'm drawing out some of my thoughts. Is that good, Rose? Uh, possibly. The, screen, the paper seems a bit bright, so it'll be hard to see how well it works until you start drawing. So what I'm trying to work on in regards to my art practice, I shouldn't have taken off that sheet of paper because I'm always looking for um, you know, perfection. And this is not, the drawing is not perfection because I'm not a particularly great drawer, like um, you know, naturally talented or anything. It's just to work out the idea. So when I'm creating stuff, I know what I want to, and the more you write something down and you're intentional about it, the more likely it's um, going to happen. So I'm looking at um, pictures from uh, art exhibit on Ocean. And I have a mirror that I have to finish. I have, I have a, but I have small mirrors I have to finish. And now I'm going to think about, I have a Daughters of the Dust themed installation that I've been working on. And I have a whole bunch of um, tablecloths that need to be put together. Um, Rose? Yep. Do, if I need, can I use a sewing machine tomorrow outside? Uh, sure, if the weather's all right. Yeah, we could use a sewing machine tomorrow. Okay, great. So I'm gonna bring fabric to sew because I need to do a lot of that. Mm -hmm. And um, that would be useful. And one of the things I do is like domestic art. And so, like with the tablecloth, I take doilies and pieces of white fabric, usually like different types of tablecloths that are, they have different textures and then I put them together. Let me see if, I don't know if you'll be able to see it on the screen. A lot of ways in which I, um, 
organize my thoughts is to have a Pinterest board. And so in which to get ideas. Can you see? You can't see that, can you? Uh, not really, just kind of yeah. big rectangles. Yeah. So that's what I'm looking at right now to see like what I need to be able to work on. Um, for Daughters of the Dust, everything is all white. And I've been working on what I call like serving sculptures, where I put different pieces together to make a uh, interesting shape. So a lot of plates are like kind of boring nowadays. And so I'll put together two teacups on the bottom of a plate to give it a lift and to give it dimension to make it a little bit more interesting. So Rose, I have half an hour till Julia comes. <laughs> okay. Uh, should I just keep on talking? Yeah, may as well. Uh can't really see the um, what you've been drawing too well, so maybe periodically tilt the camera to show what that, or yeah, tilt that up so we can see it. And the yellow is so, just hard to see in general. Yeah, it's like it's hard for you to see. Can you see? You see? Yeah, I can see the black all right. Yellow on white is just hard to see. <laughs> yeah. Excuse me. Bless you. Sorry. I am just looking through Pinterest and trying to find a particular board. I can't remember what I called it. So a lot of my um, different installations, they're also made for people to come and interact whether I'm there or not. So I'm just trying to streamline my, like with my Oshun exhibit, for instance, is uh, it's a like kind of piece of the senses. And so there is a scent station. I like to do stuff with scents because um, aromatherapy, Aromatherapy. Um, I think that scent influences mood, and you can create a mood within the installations that people enter. And I like to have music, all those aspects, and those details considered to create an interesting a memorable experience.
I keep on thinking someone's gonna come out and I'm hoping. <laughs> there was someone who came by earlier. Did he not want to stay? No, he had an appointment. And so wow. I think he's gonna come back tomorrow. Like, yeah, okay. he was asking about like the two different programs. Mm -hmm. And I think that he wants to, um, you know, have more pe people that he can create with or like at least talk about that or, you know, um, be around that environment. So I think he might come tomorrow. Well, that'd be nice. Maybe next time. Yeah. Too bad Lori can't come out here. She wants to talk to me. <laughs> I said, I've got to talk to you when I come back out. Oh, Sunday dinner. That's what it's called, Sunday dinner. So I'm just looking at things that are all um, white decor mm -hmm. and thinking about the different tablecloths and um, finishings that I want. And I love lace. I like texture. Yeah, so I think we're going to work on fabric tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And um, maybe making some vases out of some doilies. Um, would that involve like stiffening them somehow i have to see like what you do i'm just looking at on pinterest mm -hmm. pinterest a creative's best friend mm -hmm. until you fall mm -hmm. down a rabbit hole of, of just so many ideas and you never have time for anything because you're looking at, at more i know they won't open as often it doesn't have to Yeah, these crocheted vases are $54 on Etsy. Yeah. Interesting. Um, Rose, you can ask me another question. <laughs> um, hmm. so people can see my eyes, I guess. <laughs> Are you done drawing for now? Um, I don't know if I'm done drawing. As I said, I'm not the best drawer, so. Yeah, you get better with practice. Yeah. 
I more wanted to figure out like, okay, I'm gonna be doing tablecloths. And then the things that I have that are, that um, need to be done, you know? Um, and, yeah, my yeah. My decoupage um, shells. Mm -hmm. I don't know about tomorrow, but um, what would you be using for the decoupage? Would you use like magazine cutouts? Do you have something else in mind? Um, I have to find um, blue and white paper. I'm have to just. Um, you know that blue, you know, like um, that Victorian blue and white. Um, like the blue china plate kind of thing? Yeah, exactly. That's what I want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See if there's some available in scrapbook paper or something. Yeah. Because I have to do a lot of them. Mm -hmm. I was gonna go to Dwell because they they have a, a a lot of interesting stuff like that, nice homeware. Mm -hmm. And I was gonna go to Atticus because sometimes they have that kind of stuff too. Look what I drew. Oysters. <laughs> All right. Uh. So it's going to be part of a train of um, part of uh, a train of, of a mannequin and with blue and white um, fabric that is based on a uh, West African um, kind of technique called the deer. And it's um, using indigo. And the indigo came from South America, no, no, South America, um, South Carolina. And down there, they, they grew indigo. And, you know, we use that for our jeans, all that. But um, that's used in a dairy. Um, it's a beautiful print and um, a way of printing fabric. So, it, um, it's a nice flowy skirt, and then it will go down to the ground for the goddess Yamaya. And Yamaya is the goddess of um, the Nigerian goddess, Yoruba goddess of um, seawater. So Oshun is the goddess of freshwater, and Yamaya is the goddess of seawater. And so they're going to be at two different corners, and Oshun's water, which is gold, and Yamaya's water, which is blue and white, will they'll merge into each other symbolically as fresh water and seawater coming together. And without both of them, you cannot have humankind because we always need water. So, but it's the celebration of like the different textures and fabrics and stuff like that. We now have 20 minutes. I don't I don't think it's good for me to do a timeline. I feel like I need to call some people from the green or do a wave or something. I definitely next time need to take my um, allergy medication. Ooh. So that drawing, even though um, it's not very well done, it made me figure out how the two pieces are gonna come together, just the practice of drawing and getting something down on paper. And now I'm gonna look up, um, you know, a couple months ago, we did a goddess box. Yamaya was one of the people. 
one of the goddesses that we did a box on that you could do one on. And I need to look up a symbol to then figure out what are some things that I can make um, that can go with her installation. Because the Oshin one is pretty much developed mm -hmm. and I have some small things. I have to make a really nice, a couple of nice mirrors, but Yamaya is in its infancy. So Yamaya likes jewelry, so I can make some jewelry for her. So river stones, cowry shells. fish. White cloth. Indigo cloth. Water like beads. A mermaid. So she's also the goddess of motherhood and um, she governs everything pertaining to women, particularly birth and bearing of children um, and childbirth, conception, parenting, child safety, love and healing. According to myth, when her waters broke, it caused a great flood creating rivers and streams and the first mortal humans were created from her womb. I did not know that. The wind keep blowing, keeps blowing some bit paper in front of the camera. You might want to oh, wipe it down. Okay. I'm sorry. So dishes and porcelain. Are her sacred objects, earth, basins, the cola nut, white jars, and pitchers, white coins, and metals. Her ritual foods are 
cornmeal, manilic, or like cassava flour, cornmeal boiled in coconut milk, onion, rice, white corn. She likes um, perfume. It said female vanity. Perfume, jewelry, combs, lipstick, mirrors. They're gathered in large baskets and taken out to sea by their local fishermen. Afterwards, a massive street party ensues. This is in Salvador in Bahia. Because in Brazil, many of the people, especially in Salvador and Bahia, that's the highly African part. They practice this religion. Even if they practice Catholicism or Christian religion, many of the people also practice this or it's a way to have created this religion as a way to preserve African derived religion, which it is. Excuse me. Excuse me. So many people ask me like, why do I do like Oshun or Yamaya and these things? And even though I don't practice and it's because um, I love um, goddesses and gods and mythology and symbols. Um, and it's not very often, you know, I didn't hear, I didn't, I didn't know about these, um, goddesses from Africa. So I was probably in college. And so I think it's important that, you know, we learn Roman mythology and Greek mythology. You have all these different gods, and goddesses from around the world. And, um, you know, like you have Nordic ones, you have, you know, ones from Mexico and Central America, Asian ones. And I think that they're all worthy of study and gathering inspiration, inspiration um, and guidance too. <coughs> so now that I wrote all those things down for Yamaya, I will slowly gather those things and I like to work with um, things that are already here. And so I make a lot of things from, you know, I get from buy nothing groups, um, tag sales, you know, things that people are throwing away. Um, here in New Haven, Hamden, on Mondays and Tuesdays, um, the Salvation Army has 50% off housewares. And they have a really, a lot of nice houseware. And so I'll start gathering up um, white pictures and then I'm gonna start asking people um, for things also online because um, for my Daughters of the Dust installation, I need white plates um, and dishes and stuff like that. And they don't need to match. And so just ask people, you know, do you have some white plates and start gathering up those things. Um, because as part of now that um, we're doing more in-person things, I'll start having dinners again, and I want everything, they're not necessarily going to match, because um, I don't do that matchy-matchy stuff necessarily, because I like to use things that people have passed away and find purpose in it, and so... I'll be putting together some interesting tablescapes with the things that I find. 
Do you know what's going on on the grid? No, I don't. No. They put on um, they put up a a tent. I like these markers. They're they're paint markers. They're brush markers. Oh, okay. I wonder where I got them because a lot of the markers that I've I've gotten they don't last very long. That's annoying. So I thought about three installations. There's two more that I want to try and do. But I don't know. One of them is like very delicate matter. So I don't know if I want to tackle that in, at this point. And then um, both of them actually are, they're very, what is about the transatlantic um, slave trade? And one is about um, kind of like modern day lynching. And so how do you do that in a delicate way? So. So I always think it's best as a creative to do things that you know that you can um, do and that there's always things in regard to divine timing. And some of the other things I want to do is um, use historical documents in some of my work. So I know that during some of these times, I'll be looking up some stuff. And maybe having some of the librarians look up some stuff for me, Rose. <laughs> uh, you to look something up. I was just answering a question for someone. Uh, <laughs> no, I said, I said, I want to start using one of the things that I didn't get to do during this time. I want to use this, some, do some stuff with historical documents. Because I like historical documents, mm -hmm. and so um, and also historical pictures, like you know the old-fashioned um, flower pictures, stuff like that. Rose, I think like all the, are there? Where are all the good magazines? I don't know. I just grabbed a handful of old magazines we have that we set aside to like cut up for projects. Can you hear that music? Mm, not really. Yeah. Is that coming from the green? It's coming from someone's car. Huh? I just want to see how much you could pick up. Yeah, I can. I can hear it with my own ears, but not like through the the headphones. Yeah. So I guess your iPad is pretty good at blocking out the sounds from the surrounding area. 
Um, is the art gallery open now? Good question. I'm looking that up. All right, I'm going to move to a different computer, so I'll be back in a minute. All right. If anyone's listening, the library is the the Yale Art Gallery is open three to seven on Fridays, Saturdays from twelve to four, and Sunday from twelve to four. Very interesting hours. You have to reserve a ticket, I believe. It seems like. And to reserve your tickets, they're free. Because the Yale Art Gallery is free. Of course, they're sold out, the tickets. Oh, oh, Saturday, June 12th. Three o'clock. Saturday, June 12th, it is. And I got my tickets to the yeah, art gallery for Saturday as well. I'm happy. So this is a very interesting talking to myself on camera. Uh, I think on a podcast, people are a little bit more intentional and write down the things they're gonna say and office hours is supposed to be fluid. And looking and talking to myself for over two hours a lot, for over an hour. Okay, I'm back now. All right, can you see better now? Uh, I can see you all right. Um, I hope my guest comes, and if they don't come in 10 minutes, I don't
So I'm just writing out um, the triangular slave trade, the different things, um, and how I'm going to put together. It's going to be a table um, and talk about like true, true domestic arts, kind of, you know, like how, how um, financially people have benefited from the triangular trade. And so it will feature things from their like um, indigo, uh, tablecloths, um, blue and white um, serving platters and stuff like that because that kind of porcelain came out of that time era. Um, you know, in regard to like what we serve like rum, rum the molasses came from the caribbean you know um, a lot of rum barons were in newport and the northeast so even though they might not have had quote unquote um, enslaved people they supported the slave trade and also under rick wrote through insurance um, and banking the trade and so a lot of people they look at financial forensics, their money leads back to that. And so what does that mean in our society? Now, a lot of people are talking about reparations, but you know, if a percentage of your money can be tied to people who weren't given a salary, what do you do to reconcile that? And so that's what the piece is going to bring up sitting at a table that it's beautiful, but has a painful history based on our past. So the type of rice, um, you know, Carolina rice, I say called Carolina gold because they made so much money from it, you know, and um, people that they brought from West Africa, the enslaved people that they brought, they understood how to cultivate that rice because they were cultivating it and on the continent. And so a lot of people feel like, you know, don't realize that many of the peoples that were brought here were very skilled people that the information that they had was needed in order for people to make a profit without paying them. And so all that history is very interesting um, to me and also the cross fertilization of um, of ideas, of um, trade, and how does that create different types of culture in regards to like food and, you know, salted fish um, and salted cod, you know, um, in regard to, you know, rum, you know, and in that, in that history, that painful history to make something that, you know, people consume and enjoy to this day. So, it's figuring out how to be able to do it and do it in a way that does the history justice and also celebrates our ancestors and their ability to create things through adversity that are timeless and
be part of America's foundation, literally. So Rose, I don't know if Rose is here. Rose. Oh, sorry, I had my microphone off, yep. So I don't see Julia, I don't know what we should do. Up to you if you'd like to keep going for a while, if you'd like to call a little early today. I think I'll call it a little early and then I'll try and get a, a couple more people. That's why I want to be able to have the lunch because we get people here. But I'm gonna I'm gonna offer people a cooking class, a, a online cooking class if they come. Okay. So let's see if the, that can make people <laughs> be more dynamic. Mm -hmm. uh, Maybe the gentleman who was who came by earlier will come back and bring friends. Yeah. So, all right. All right. Then Thank I you. will see you a little bit later for our meeting then. Will you like stick around just, with the library? Um, yeah, I'm gonna go get something to eat and then come back, okay? Okay, so I'll see you then. All right, thanks, bye. Yep, bye.